Hey everybody, welcome to Q&A Wednesday where I answer the questions that you have about your health and fitness goals. Now, first of all, just really quick, it is getting warm here and I've got to figure out how to cool off my studio. It's really warm in here. It's not part of the regular part of the house. So hair up today because it's definitely, definitely warm out. It's so funny because I, I, all year I cannot wait for <laughs> to get warm because I hate being cold and now it's just, oh, I'm a little just too warm. So, uh, okay, we got a great topic today. You know, it's it's one of those quotes that you hear all the time. You know, when you're when you're trying to get heavy, you're supposed to eat less, move more. Um, and it's so frustrating because I'm like, that is so incorrect on so many levels. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why today. It's just one of those. I, I don't know. Think about all the things you've been told about you know health and nutrition, and then go back and look at how that has not worked out for you whatsoever. So. <laughs> You know, when people say, well, I heard the blah, 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 and I'm like, and how is that working for you? So keep in mind that just because you hear something and, and just because, you know, my frustration is everybody says, well, it's science. Okay, well, science is always improving and they're always testing theories and they're always coming up with, with new formulations. So you can't just say, you know, because it's been said before, it is now forever correct because at one point, doctors were telling people that smoking was good for you. So again, keep in mind that the, the advice and the science is only as good as the scientists that is proving it um, and really we got to make sure that they don't have a bias one of the biggest issues with um, the the science today is that what we've been told in the past is based on a, some really biased um, I, uh, ideas I can't think of the word today it's the end of the day right um, so keep in mind that just because you know at one point if you remember the original food pyramid you know it said that we were supposed to have like like 8 to 11 servings of whole grains which is <laughs> horrifically incorrect when you have too many carbs and it's hitting your blood as sugar notice that we have quite the um, extreme issue across our nation with obesity and that is a problem and I am NOT okay with that so you know I'm really working what, my, what I feel my job is because you know I, I my education is in education uh, I've kind of always been a teacher that's been the direction that I go so even as a coach um, and a personal trainer I really try to educate my people because it's not just about what you do now with your short-term goals it's about trying to in incorporate that as a lifestyle for the rest of your life so that you can be healthy forever um, and, and to not be crazy about it, right? It has to be sustainable. So let's talk about why the quote, um, eat less, move more is just inappropriate. So let's talk about the first part of it. Let's talk about the eat less. So while portion control is really super important, it doesn't get enough into the details. So, you know, when I start working with people, um, and, and even if I look back over to my transformation um, as a very, very large woman for a good portion of my adult life, um, one of the first things I did have to learn was calories in versus calories out. Like that's kind of the starting point. You have to realize that you wanna make sure that you're not eating more than you're burning. That is important, but unfortunately it's not the only issue that you have to deal with. The second part of it is that you also have to pay attention to which of where you're getting all your macronutrients. Just like we just talked about the food pyramid, the problem with that food pyramid is it's really giving you the wrong portions for what most people are trying to accomplish. So again, keep that in mind. That is also the issue I have with my fitness pal, even though I love that app, it's the one I use with all my clients at the moment. Um, and it's, I, I really do love it. But when you input your information, what your goals are, it just doesn't give you, it, it uses one algorithm and it just doesn't give you the right information for what you're trying to accomplish for your goals because everybody's so different. You can't cookie cutter this stuff. So um, part of it is just making sure that you understand what the different macronutrients do and the percentages really come down to what your goals are at the time, right? Now, that does not cut out the fact that the food has to be quality food, right? It, it, there's a huge difference between, you know, I, I've discussed this before. When is a calorie not a calorie? Well, 30 calories of a Tootsie Roll and 30 calories of broccoli are not the same they're just not the broccoli obviously because it's more roughage it's definitely a whole food it has a lot more fiber your body's gonna have to heat up hotter to break it down it's gonna take longer to break it down and you're not going to be able to absorb it as quickly as you are the Tootsie Roll which is a processed food with lots of sugar right so again you have to make sure that your food is quality so that you are getting nutrients not just calories that is a huge part of it and I think we've really come to a point um, in our country where we're just eating a lot of crappy empty calories that don't really benefit us we've, we've not been taught what food is for it's supposed to be to sustain us and to give us energy and that's we're kind of looking at that like in this really weird like okay well you know a pop tart's a carbohydrate well yeah but it's pure sugar so it's going you're just going to store it as fat so keep in mind that all those things play a role so when we when they say eat less i 100 percent disagree i actually don't want you to eat less i just want you to eat right 
okay? Now again, you don't have to cut out everything that you love because I know that that's not sustainable and I still do once in a while have those things that I really love, like chocolate. Like if I had to cut it out forever, I probably wouldn't stay with it. So, but I don't have it every day and I, I definitely don't make that a part of my regular nutrition because of, it's gonna go against what I'm trying to accomplish. But if you're eating right, first of all, it's a lot more food than you think it is. It's a lot of volume and my clients always complain how am I gonna eat all this? I'm like, well, you've been eating that in like three Big Macs, that's, that's three Big Macs worth of food in a day, and you're able to do that, so pretty sure you can eat these calories. It's just a lot of volume because whole clean food is much, much less than calories. You have to eat more of it to get what you need. So when they say eat less, that's not really what it is. You just have to eat right. You have to eat the right kinds of food. You have to eat for nutrients. You have to eat for fuel, right? And it is different. It, there's no loophole here guys. You're not gonna be able to say well like can I still have Reese's peanut butter cups? Well, yeah once in a while, you know, I like to make myself earn it and first of all if it's not if it's not amazing and it's not worth it, then what's the point, right? But it cannot be part of your regular daily intake if you are trying to live a healthier lifestyle because sugar is it's a, it's a drug. It just is. It's going to, first of all, you're addicted to it. If you've ever tried to get off sugar and you've had withdrawals, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but it really makes it the food that you're eating addictive. Plus the fact that the research and development of whatever company, you know, you're getting that product from, they want you to be addicted to it because they want to sell more of it, right? So if you look at our government, big pharma, big food, they don't want you to be healthy because that doesn't benefit them um, when it comes to, to money and greed, right? Like they, they want to solve the issue for you, but they don't want to tell you that, you know, it really is pretty inexpensive. You just have to eat better. Um, and it's more about prevention than taking a pill. Like if you look at healthcare, it's not really healthcare, it's sick care. <laughs> they don't teach prevention. And that's really where I think we get a lot of things wrong in our country. The Western medicine focuses on band-aid fix, you know, take care of it after the fact versus we need to be looking at really taking care of our bodies now so that we don't go through those things. Um, and there's a, most of our disease and most of what is killing our um, population, our country is metabolic disease. So we really have to go back and see what we can do to change that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about move more. Now, I don't 100% disagree with that because really, especially, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that through this pandemic, people have really, especially if they were quarantined at their homes and they really didn't have the options to go anywhere. I did, I went outside. I was like, screw this, I'm gonna go outside and do something. My yard last year looked amazing. Not so much right now, but um, you know, if you don't move, you have an issue there. So, it, But it doesn't even necessarily require a gym. The benefit of movement is multi, right? So first of all, you're gonna burn more calories. There's something called NEAT, which is non-exercise, make sure I get this right so I don't mess this up, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So all that means is that you do, okay, so you do good, burn a good portion of calories just from breathing and being awake for the day, right? Um, you have something called a resting metabolic rate, or some people call it a basal metabolic rate, but that's a, a smidge different but a lot of people use that interchangeably. But what that just means is just because you are alive, you burn calories, right? So you have a starting point. Now, throughout the day, yeah, if you go to the gym, that's great, um, but it's, it's not necessarily required, especially if you don't know how to exercise, if that's not something that's part of your regular day. Over time, that would be awesome because it's gonna speed up the benefits in the process and there's literally no downside. But even if you just move throughout the day, if you fidget, if you, you know, move around to go do laundry or, you know, cook breakfast, all of those things count. A good portion of the calories that you burn every day are going to come down into what they call the neat, right? Those neat calories. So even that's actually that's the benefit of having a Fitbit or a smartwatch or something that tracks your movement and your, your steps. Um, I literally use that. Um, wasn't a Fitbit, it was a, it was a body bug way back when. But the benefit of it was I kind of challenged myself every day and I could track what I was doing. So the days that I wasn't quite hitting 10,000 steps, because trust me in the beginning wasn't even close, um, but then I would play, you know, beat myself. I'd go do more um, steps so that I could get those steps in for the day. So it really kind of gives you a good eye-opening experience as to how much you are moving throughout the day if you have a tracker. Now, I don't wear mine every day. One of the things that I've learned between the few trackers I've used is they start to imprint on your skin and leave some, some permanent markings, which are not fabulous. But, you know, in the beginning, that might be a great idea for you to figure out what you need to improve on. So, not a bad idea there. So, again, yes, move more is great, but I think a lot of people, especially a lot of my clients, think it's got to be all or nothing. Like, you know, go hard or go home. I've got to be a, a perfect, a million, all in. 
that's okay sometimes, but most people don't have the time, the energy, or the mental stability to be able to be all in all the time, unless you are an athlete and you're doing something that requires that you move for your job, you're probably gonna have a, a job lifestyle and then you're gonna have this other part of your lifestyle. So it's really about balance. Now, really quickly, let me touch on the fact that balance is gonna change over your lifetime. At 46, it's a whole lot different than it was 10 years ago when my kids were much smaller and now I have a grandbaby that I get to chase after and she's hilarious. Um, but as life changes, the balance will change, thereby the strategy has to change. So you know what worked for you 10 years ago may not work now. Now it's a good starting point, you know, if, if something really worked for you, that's great. Start there, but don't be afraid to kind of tweak a little bit to make sure that you're dialed into what works for you. Don't overthink it. Like I'm kind of telling you the things that I tend to do. I'm a perfectionist, a control freak, and I overthink everything. And the problem there is then sometimes I, I freeze because I'm, I don't know that perfect option, so it's hard to get started. So I've gotten a little bit better about, okay, just get going. It's more about the consistency. It's more about the effort. Stop stressing over it. I still do sometimes, that's just, we're human, right? Okay, so let's re let's recap really quickly. It's not about eating less, it's about eating right. Eating the right things, the right things for you, the right things for your, your body, your genetics, um, and for what your goals are, right? And then, and of course, it's gotta be quality. And move more, yes and no. So again, you have to make sure that, number one, you're getting enough sleep as well. So if you are hitting the gym for an hour a day or whatever it is that your goal is, and you're eating all the right things, but you're not getting enough sleep, you're not gonna get the recovery, you're not gonna see the benefits that you want to, the results that you wanna have. So there's an overall process of being overall healthy, and it just requires a little bit of consistency in a couple of different directions, a little bit of cardio, a little bit of strength training, Definitely pay attention to nutrition, make sure you get enough sleep, and make sure that you're taking care of your mental and emotional health. That is really super important. So um, I think I got it all. So hopefully that answers that. It's just one of those things I keep seeing and hearing, and I, I just, it's such a standard quote that I'm like, okay, just because you hear it somewhere out there doesn't mean that that really works. Make sure that you're looking into these things and looking behind it. We've got a lot of people who think they're professionals out there spitting a lot of information um, and what I have learned over the last decade, and especially within the last year, which is just driving me absolutely crazy, is that a lot of people have no idea what they're talking about. So I'm the first to tell you I don't know everything. Every day I listen to podcasts from people who I believe know the right direction, the right experts, that they're talking about the right sciences, because these things over here aren't working, right? So these things, because they, they some of it's just common sense, right? Just paying attention. You remember when fat caused you to be fat, which is not true, right? Dietary fat and adipose tissue are not the same thing and don't necessarily equal the same thing. So keep in mind that over as things change and we find out new information, we have to be looking for that new information in order to know what's correct, what's right. It just has to make sense. I tell people some education, some experience, and a huge dose of common sense. That's how, that's how we get to the information that we need to have. So have an incredible evening, you guys. Um, hopefully I continue to be out here. Like I said, it's pretty warm out here. I'll have to figure something out because it's a great space and it's quiet, so nobody nobody gets in my way, and I love it. So um, also, this weekend, 10, uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, on the same platform, um, we are doing Meals with Melissa, where we come up with these great options of healthier things that you love to eat. Um, so be sure to tune into that um, every Saturday. Yep, it's pretty awesome. And you can also go back to all of the ones I've done before, all the videos that I've done live, you can find on my YouTube channel, I can't even talk today, no, it's Wednesday, YouTube channel under Fillmore Fitness. So you can go back and see all those things that, that we've talked about before. So if you have a question, I might answer it there. You can also ask me by leaving a message down below. Um, you can also go to my Facebook uh, Messenger and leave me a question, leave me a comment, ask a question. I get my very best ideas from you guys. So don't be afraid to, you know, keep in touch and talk to me about it. So have an incredible day, you guys. Happy spring, and we'll talk soon. Have a good night.